I am suing my mortgage lender, Bank of America, and this is the cover sheet, the complaint. And you can see I'm the plaintiff and they're the defendant. Defendants being Bank of America, Bank of New York Mellon, trustee for Schwab's 2007-12 asset back certificates and MERS Corp. And I'm suing them for fraud. And you can see there's my complaint where I say I'm the defendant, I'm the, excuse me, the plaintiff, they're the defendant. And that's the first page. There's the stamp from the prothonotary office, notice to defend. And basically explaining what's going on here, page one. Jurisdiction and the new. Factual allegations. Exhibits. The exhibits are copies of my mortgage note and mortgage and the uh, fraudulent assignment and the pooling and servicing agreement showing when the cutoff date for my mortgage to enter the trust would actually be and when they actually filed it fraudulently with a robo-signer and the county recorder's office. And what other laws they broke. And of course we like to always put in there other court cases to back up what you're claiming. Wherefore, and I'm basically asking for clear title to the property since they crowded it, damages for what they did wrong, judgment, cost for any kind of litigation punitive damages. Now, if you're a pro se person like I am, you'll also want to send a letter to your attorney general telling them about the fraud. And this is the typical letter you get back from them. It's just nice to be able to get that. I also sent what's called a qualified written request to Bank of America asking them to provide me with proof of debt. And that's what this is. And by law, they have to reply to this letter asking them to validate your debt. And down here, it's signed and notarized. Anytime you send them information, whether it be copies of the complaint or any kind of letters, really should sign and notarize it because then they know you mean business. The other thing I sent was a letter to the IRS. I'm going to try to find you. Yes, here it is. Letter to the IRS. Basically, for a violation of REMIC 2 tax violations. And you can see that the pooling and servicing agreement that they filed with the SEC show that the trust closed on August 13th, 2007. So my loan apparently wasn't assigned until October of 2011. So all those payments that I made for four years entered that trust in a tax-free status when it shouldn't have, according to New York law, that is. So they can look into it. I'm sure they'll appreciate the IRS looking into matters. So that's about it. Don't be afraid to file a uh, lawsuit against your lender because if they're committing fraud, then they need to be held accountable for that. And uh, there's a lot of great information on the Internet that can help you. So that way you can actually do this yourself.
it's it's not as hard as you might think it is and there's a lot of good people out there willing to help you out and uh, you just don't want to lose your house without a fight because uh, I tell you what they, they don't have any legitimate uh, rights to your house what they're doing is fraudulent and um, they need to pay for what they're doing so wish you luck